and to turn in your Bibles to the book of Judges. And I'll give you a few minutes because that's one of those books that we don't go to very often. Mm. Amen. The book of Judges, sixth chapter. Amen. I was As I was preparing uh, for a word on this week, as always, God, at the very last minute, he changed my direction. Amen. He changed my direction. And I said, Lord, I thank you because I only want to do what God wants me to do. I don't want to do nothing on my own. Amen? Amen. 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 Are you there? If you're not, amen, we have it available for you up on the screen. Mm -hmm. And I want to start this morning by asking a question. And that question is, how do you see yourself? Mm. How do you see yourself? Amen. What defines you? Because so often we're caught up in what we drive, where we work. Amen. Does where you live define you? Amen. When I think about the residents in this great city, amen, it would not matter if you live in a tent under the bridge if you love the Lord. Amen. You are just as important as the person who lives in a million dollar home. Right. What defines you this morning? Is it your education? Amen. We have testimonies in this church today that people are aware and doing things that education had nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 So what defines you? There's only one who has the authority, amen, to define us this morning. Only the one who gave you life can identify you. Amen. Doesn't matter what you call yourself or what others have called you. There's one who can tell you who you are. Amen. 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 Circumstances may have made things difficult for you, but they are not powerful, powerful enough to identify you. Amen. Your history may have hurt you, Amen. but it doesn't have the authority to label you. You know, we, 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 we find ourselves accepting what society labels us to be. Amen, but they don't have that authority. Amen. It doesn't matter what your mother called you, yeah. Come on, what now. your dad did to you. Mm -hmm. Say that. Surely these things hurt you. Amen, and I'm not trying to diminish the fact that it may have taken an emotional toll on you. Mm -hmm. And those things might take years and a lot of hard work, amen, to get that stuff what's been rooted in you, out of you. Amen. But it doesn't have the power to shape the totality of who God has called you to be. Amen. You're not defined by your past. That's right. Somebody ought to be shouting right there. Oh. You're not defined by your failures. Amen. You're not defined by your mistakes this morning. Amen. You are not defined by your struggles today. This is good news this morning. Amen. Some people are struggling in ways they've never struggled before. We're dealing with things we've never dealt with before. Amen. But your failures and your struggles don't define you. Amen. Not even your feelings define you. You are, listen to me clearly, who God said you are. Amen. It's important for you to know this morning. Amen. You're a royal priesthood. Amen. Amen. You are a chosen people. It doesn't matter your skin color this morning, Bishop. Doesn't matter the texture of your hair nor the shape of your body. Amen. You have been chosen. Redeemed. Forgiven. Amen. You are not a mistake. Amen. You are made in the image of God. You say, how can that be? We're different shapes. Different sizes, different complexions, amen. amen. Come from different backgrounds and all walks of life, but each and every one of us, as we are, that's how powerful God is. Amen. We're made in His image. Amen. That means if any person or system tries to diminish who God says you are, they are anti God. Amen. That's why we have to be careful who we surround ourselves with. Amen. It doesn't matter if you are introverted. Or extroverted. Mm -hmm. Some people say, I wish I was like so and so, and I wish I didn't have to be like this. But I came to tell you this morning, you are exactly who God created you to be. And then I was thinking last night as I was preparing for church, I was thinking about this great woman of God that we have as our first lady. And I, I, I was thinking about the fact that she shops. Mm 
And she shops. And boy, does she shop. And I know sometimes, Mr. you might wish she didn't shop. But she is exactly who God created her to be. Amen. Amen. I went through a season where I had some problems with my legs and my feet. And my husband would buy all kind of inserts and try to make sure it was one in every <coughs> pair of shoes. And oh, when I mentioned it to First Lady, she went out and got shoes, casual shoes, dress shoes, open toe shoes, closed toe shoes. But all of these shoes were designed with me in mind. Amen. And I could walk without any insoles in my shoes. So don't stop her from shopping. <laughs> I might pay for that one after two today. You are not a mistake. You're exactly who God created you to be. Even, watch this, watch this. Even your weaknesses, amen, are not a liability. You say, how can that be? Because your weaknesses are actually a platform for God's strength to be shown in your life. And then when I think about not being able to see, when I think about the lack of my sight, it's not a weakness. It's really not a liability. It might be to somebody else, but for me, it's just an opportunity for God's strength to be shown in my life. Because I can see a walk, talk, and do what I need to do. Amen. Without a cane, without a dog, without anybody. Holding my hand. Amen. God's power is shown in my weakness. Amen. So don't think you're a liability because things go wrong. Mm -hmm. So when you surrender yourselves totally to God, all of you, Amen. and put your faith in the Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. Amen. He now lives in us. Mm -hmm. We become, we're, we're a vessel for the Holy Spirit to live, to be used as tools and instruments for His glory. Amen. So everything that you go through, Everything who makes you who you are is all to the glory of God. Amen. He made you. Amen. And he don't make no mistakes. Amen. The enemy wants to twist and, and, and turn and, and distort who you see yourself as because you'll either live up to your potential of who God called you to be or you'll live beneath what God's called you to be. That's all right. of what you believe God says about you. But you must also align yourself Align your behavior, amen, up with your new identity. You cannot be a new person and keep doing the same old thing. Amen. Amen. The Bible says for us to lay aside the weight and the sin uh -huh. that does so easily beset us amen. so that we can run this race. Amen. I knew that scripture this morning that's been in my mind all week, what he said in the praise and worship. It says for us not to conform any longer amen. to the patterns of this world, amen. but us to be transformed amen. By the renewing of our mind. Amen. Renew. Amen. And we can't do the same thing. Amen. Amen. It has nothing to do with how we feel. Uh, not according to our circumstances. Listen to me this morning. I don't care what's going on in your life. Your circumstances do not define you. Amen. 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 But it's according to who God says you are. Amen. In the Old Testament and the New Testament, uh, when, when the Lord would call someone, he would often change their name. Mm -hmm. So when he called Abram, he said, no longer will you be called Abram, but your name will now be Abraham. Mm -hmm. So when he changed his name, he also changed the GPS coordinates, amen, of his life. So where he ends up is not where he would have ended up. And that's why you are where you are today. Amen. Because when God changes you, he changes where you go. Yeah. He changes how your situation is going to end up. Amen. And God said to Abraham, out of you, I'm going to create a new people. A new group of people. We know them today as Israelites. God's chosen people. Somebody said, that's me. Amen. Amen. They will be mine and I will be theirs and I will set them apart and they will no longer be who they used to be. Amen. But they will now bear my name, my provision, and my promises. Amen. My blessings will shape them. Amen. I thank God today because, amen, I don't have to worry about anything that's going on in my life. That's God's job. Amen. All I have to do is align myself up and believe who he said that's he changed it. me to be. Amen. amen. If only the Israelites, if only they would, amen, would accept and line themselves up with their new identity. 
When I think of the children of Israel, I think they're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> just like us. Keep forgetting who you are. Mm -hmm. Keep looking at your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Somebody reached out to me last week and said, would you touch and agree with me that I would get accepted into this program that I wanted to be accepted in? And I thought, absolutely I will. But you, if you know who you are, Glory. 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 you can just claim it. Amen. Amen. Amen in the name of Jesus. Amen. They kept forgetting who God said they were, and over and over, they were surrounded and they, they were seduced by the, the idol of the culture. And you know, we have to walk away from what the world does and what the world says and how they see things. Amen. The Israelites, they kept running in fear from foreign enemies. They were, they, they were free from, uh, from 400 years of slavery, amen, to receive the blessings of the Lord, and they didn't get to enjoy them, simply because they did not live up to the standard of their new identity. Mm -hmm. You gotta know who God called you to be. Amen. They kept looking at their circumstances, and you know what, when, 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 I, when I think about things that go on in the course of a 24-hour period, I, I, I see them, but I don't dwell on them because I know that things don't mean what they seem. Amen. They kept bending and bowing and settling, amen. And in this lesson, if you, I want you to go back and read the sixth chapter. It is so amazing. Mm -hmm. But and I'm, I'm going to read on a couple of verses of the day. But in this in this particular chapter, in the children of Israel, they actually were on the land of milk and honey. They were in the place where God mm -hmm. said they were going to be. They were actually on the real estate of Canaan and could not enjoy it. Mm -hmm. God has ordained and destined for us to be in a certain place at a certain time in our lives. Amen. And we're going to get there because God's word can't lie. Amen. But if you want to enjoy the goodness of God, if you want to enjoy his promises and his provision, you got to be reminded and remind yourself regularly of who God said you are. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They're in the place that God promised. And they can't enjoy it because they have not gotten this thing called identity. They haven't got that taken care of. They couldn't see it because they didn't see themselves as any more than what they were. They were living in fear of the enemy, amen, and they were actually hiding, leaving their homes and living in caves on the mountainside because they were fearful. And we live in a society today where this identity crisis is, boy, one rampant. <laughs> you know it is. Yeah. Amen. Everything that God has already given a definition to, people are trying to redefine. Mm -hmm. If God called you or created you to be a certain way, let me just tell you for the record, and I stand boldly to say, you are exactly who God created you to be. That's right. Amen. You can try to change you. Society can try to change you. Come on but now. You, they don't have the right nor the authority. Amen. You got to change who God called you to be. That's right. Everything for the children of Israel and everything for us, amen, can completely change when God chooses, amen, and meets up with one person and they rework the identity of who God said you are so that you will get to see. I remember a week or so ago when Bishop called some people up to the altar right after service, amen, to pray for promotions and, and, and I thought to myself, that's that person that God has said and spoke to, called to rework your view of who God said you are. Amen. If God could just get you to change your perspective, get you to see who he called you to be, and get you to align yourself up with what he said for you to live like and change your behavior, change your way of thinking and who, with, to who he said you are, then it will change everything in your life. Amen. The whole course of your life will change. So I want you to say this morning with me, my topic is, who are you? Mm -hmm. Amen, when I want you to pass by a mirror in your home, I want you to say, who am I? Who is this person? Amen. Are you in Judges 6 chapter? Amen. We're gonna read verses 11 and 12. Mm -hmm. Verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 says, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak an Ophrah that belongs to Joash the Ephesite, 
where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep them doggone Midianites from knowing where he was. <laughs> when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. What he was saying to Gideon was, let me tell you, let me remind you who you are. Right. Amen. You know, I did a little bit of research and you know, I, I, about threshing wheat and, and where he was, and he was in a wine press. Now, normally when the wheat was being threshed, it would be in an open area. Uh, if it's in an open area, the, the atmosphere or the winds would carry that smell, you know, or out from where you are. And so if he did that, the Midianites would catch whiff of the smell and then they would indeed come to where he was. And they had ravaged them for over seven years. So they would take whatever they were doing. So what Gideon did was went into a wine press. It's in a low area because he didn't want the Midianites to see what he was doing and come and take it. The, the children of Israel had opened themselves up to attack because they were not lining themselves up with the truth. And then sometimes you're going through what you're going through for a reason. And I'm going to explain that to you in just a few minutes. They're not living their lives according to the alignment with the word of God. Amen. So the enemy kept coming for them. And the Midianite have ravaged them for, I mean, for, 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 for seven years straight, taking everything they could for, from them. And now they can't enjoy the community that's actually in Canaan, the land of milk and honey, where God had said they were going to be. So they left their homes and they're now living in caves, amen, on the mountainside, all running in fear of the enemy. And so the angel was saying to Gideon, let me tell you who you are. How many, I want you to know this one, it don't take just one person. Amen. Just one person to speak into your life and remind you of who you are. And so these two verses are actually the hinge of Gideon's story. Some of you know Gideon, and man, you know of his story. He's that guy. He's that one who laid the fleece out before the Lord so that he could see that the Lord would do what he said he would do. I remember him laying the fleece out. You've got to go back and read this thing. It is rich. He said, I'm going to lay it out. And it was during the time when dew was falling. If you are God, and this is, this is you talking to me, don't let this fleece be wet. But let all the ground around it get wet. Amen. And God said, okay. Because I'm who I said I am. And I can do what I said I could do. And so the next morning when Gideon got up, the fleece was dry. And all the ground was wet. Gideon is that guy who went into battle with only 300 soldiers, amen, the underdog, if you will, and won a victory over 140,000 Midianites. Oh, God. Amen. Somebody say, oh, boy, he's that guy. Oh, but these two verses hinge, they can shift everything, absolutely everything. Verse 11 says, the, in, the angel came, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah at the belong to him, to, to his father and him. I don't want you to let, don't just, you can't just blow by this as if it means nothing. Listen, the angel of the Lord came and sat down with him. And the scholars said that this was the great presence of the Israelites' history. There is no regular angel. That is no regular angel. That is the omnipresence of God. Amen. Amen. That is the presence of the Lord God Almighty that came to Gideon. The Lord see that the situation is dying. Somebody better think about that situation. When it's dying, oh, God sees it. Amen. He, saw, he saw that it was deeply in need of his presence. Amen. His presence. And so that if, if there's one person that can change the trajectory of your life, do you know God will send that person? Yes, you will. He'll send that person. Amen. He loves you just that much. I don't know about you, but that blesses my spirit Amen. to know that God loves me that much. Amen. He loves me that much. And I don't care how many people in this world, you are never lost in the crowd. Amen. He sees you. Amen. You're never lost from the sight of God. Amen. Your friends might not know what's going on with you. 
Your spouse might not be able to see what you're going through. Your employer will never know what you're going through. You go in that job every day with your head up, they don't have no idea what you're going through. Your coworkers that you work right next to won't have no idea what you're going through. But I want you to know that the angel of the Lord has his eyes on you. Amen. He has his eyes on you. He has his eyes on you. He sees everything and exactly what's going on in your situation. He knows every detail of your circumstances. Very good. Very good. The God, people think, you know, they, some folks think they're, they're, they're silly enough to think, well, excuse me. They think that the stars align, you know, can align a certain way, and that tells what's going to happen in their life. Amen? <laughs> Amen. But I say God, the God who hung the stars in the sky, that knows each one of them by name, yeah. is the one that is, it has to show up for me over and over again. Yeah. He just keeps showing up for me. Yeah. He keeps showing up for me. Amen. That's the God who takes care of my future. He loves us just that much. Yes, he does. He loves us just Amen. that much. He will come Amen. and find you. Amen. Amen. He showed up for Moses. Watch this. Out in the dry desert, tending sheep, a job that was beneath Moses' pay grade. I'm talking to somebody who, who know that they're, they're in a place that, that they're not supposed to be. Come on now. Mm. You know you deserve more than you have. Come on with it. Amen. This was not the job that Moses anticipated. Mm -hmm. But he, because he was raised to be a royal priesthood. He was raised to be the prince of Egypt. Mm -hmm. But for 40 years, he was in this dry place. Somebody said, that's me, I'm in a dry place right now. And I want you to know by the way, he was there due to circumstances of his own doing. Amen. <laughs> Is there anybody thinking, I'm in a dry place right now? Amen. And I can't blame anybody but myself. Hallelujah. It was a decision I should not have made. Okay, just me. Amen. Just me. Amen. When I look back over my life and look back over seasons of my life, oh my God, I cannot believe the relationships I allowed <laughs> up in my space. I cannot believe some of the decisions I made yes. and the things that I did. Jesus. Amen. But today I'm so grateful to Amen. a God. Ooh, Amen. you ought to be happy right there. Amen. Amen. Because it doesn't matter if you're in a dry place based on decisions that you made that you know you should not have made. God Amen. is coming for you. Lord. He's coming Lord. for you. Amen. Amen. He keeps coming over and over and over. Even when you turn your back on him, he doesn't turn his back on you. Amen. 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 So if you're in the midst of some consequences of your own doing, I got good news for you today. Amen. Almighty God has showed up to remind you who you are. Amen. Who you are, who he called you to be. And if you're in the midst, like the Hebrew boys in the fiery furnace, amen, and it, and, and, it, and it feels like fire is all around you, and after it's, it's one thing and then it's another, amen, and life is hot right now. Mm -hmm. might, he might not bring you out of the fire, Oh, but it's an awesome thing for him to be with you in the fight. Amen. And then now your life becomes a testimony of what it feels like, amen, to come up out of that fire with not a smell of smoke on you. Yeah, yeah. You ain't going to try to tell him how to fix it. He knows exactly what he's doing. I know it might be hot for some of you right now. You might be in unfamiliar surroundings and situations. Some of them might be of your own doing and Lord. some of them not. Yes. Everything you go through doesn't mean you did something wrong. And even if you did, but let me just tell you, where you are, God is. Amen. He has his eyes on you. Right. He Amen. sees you right where you are. All you have to do is know who he called you to be. Praise God has that power. Amen. Oh my God, there's nobody like him. So I want you to know this morning that 
You can come up out of your situation without even the smell of smoke on you. Just stay there and trust God and watch him do his thing. Amen. He keeps showing up for us over and over again. He wants you to know as he did for Gideon who you are and who you're called to be. When he came, he came because they meant that much. God chose these people of Israel. Amen. The future of your life hinges on you knowing and believing who God says you are. And I want to read that verse 11 one more time, just a small part of it, because I want to show you something here. It says, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak. Amen. Can you imagine you being that important to God? Out of all the people in the world, he got his eyes on you. He sees you, and he sees what you're going through. He came in the, and made himself at home in Gideon's situation. Amen. John 1 and 14 says, And the word became flesh and made his dwelling among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory, amen, of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Praise God. Amen. I, want, I, want, I love the messenger version of this verse, and I want to read it for you this morning. John 1 and 14 from the messenger version said, And the word became flesh and blood, and moved into the neighborhood. Amen. We saw the glory with our own eyes, the one of a kind glory, like father, like son, generous inside and out, true from start to finish. God is fully engaged this morning. Amen. You might not see it, but he's fully engaged this morning with what's going on, amen, in your marriage, on your job. With your health, Amen. he's fully engaged with what's going on with your finances. Yeah. Amen. He's fully aware and engaged. He's all up in your stuff. Amen. Amen. Even, <laughs> you don't know it. Even if it's feeling hot right now. Amen. He's there. Amen. He's aware of the fear that Gideon is dealing with. Amen. And listen, in verse 11 it says, he came, the angel of the Lord came. And in verse 12, it says the angel of the Lord made himself aware to Gideon. Oh, it, it, that was a lapse in time when Gideon didn't even know that the angel was there. Mm -hmm. And then when the angel made himself, uh, made, made him, he appeared to him, is what verse 12 says. He appeared to him. I want you to know there are going to be some times when you won't even feel his presence. You won't even know he's there, but he's there. Amen. He's got his eyes on you. He got his eyes on you. And when we meet Gideon in, these, in this particular chapter, these two verses, he's actually hiding. Remember, I told you, he didn't want the Midianites to know when he was stretching the wine because if they found out, if they got whiff of the smell, they would come and ravage that too. He's trying to keep his harvest from the Midianites, amen, in a place where he's trying not to be found. How many of you know that God can find you right where you are, amen. even when you don't want to be found? But guess what? The angel of the Lord came and made his dwelling right with Gideon. Isaiah 65 and 1 says, and I won't read the verse here, but I'll, I'll paraphrase it for you. It says, I allowed myself to be found by you. Praise God. I allowed myself. If I pass, amen, a mic around from the first row all the way back to the back, we will find that there are people in this place right now who did not desire a relationship with God when God found them. Mm -hmm. Somebody came by your job and invited you to church. Somebody in your family told you about this place. Amen. Somebody in your neighborhood, amen, told you, come go to church with me. You were not even looking for a relationship with God, but God can find you right where you are. Oh. And when, in conclusion, Gideon's eyes became open. Once the angel of the Lord first came, and then he appeared to him, Gideon's eyes were open. And he became aware that the angel was there. Amen. Ephesians 1 and 18 says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be opened in order that you may know the hope, oh my God, wow. which he has called you. The riches of his glories, inheritance in this holy people. You can't know unless your eyes are open. Somebody say, open my eyes. Open my eyes, open my eyes Lord. That, that, listen, stuff that some people call coincidence. Come on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Mm -hmm. 
It's the sovereign hand of God. Have you ever done something and then looked back over and said, oh my God, if it had not been for the Lord. Amen. I remember I was, I, was, I was cooking one day some chicken and rice. And you know how long it takes for that boiled chicken and then adding the rice? And it was just hot. Amen. And as I picked up the pot off the stove, the pot slipped out of my hand and fell to the ground. And the, the, the contents of the pot went all the way to the right. Didn't come up or on me at all. That was not coincidence. That was the sovereign hand of God. Amen. Taking care of me. He knows what's going on. I'm telling you, he knows. And I remember when I, when I, when I was cooking just last week, I turned it out of the stove down for the rice to simmer. I was cooking some yellow rice. And as it started to simmer, I turned it fire all the way down. And whatever I was cooking in the pot on the right, I took the lid off. And, and brother, and I put it over on that, on that eye that was down. I've done this on more than one occasion. And I try to make sure that I'm aware of it, but God's got me. So as I moved the rice pot, I forgot to turn the eye completely off. And I took the lid and laid it down on that thing. And later on, when I felt some heat in the kitchen, I, re I saw, oh my God, the, the lid is sitting on top of this low fire. So I picked it up and I put it over in the sink and I waited for a few minutes. I thought I'd give myself, give it time to cool this. And then I started to watch it, nothing happened. The next morning when I got up, that thing had shattered into so many pieces, I could not even count. And I started to think, the Lord had his eyes on me in that situation. It was not a coincidence. Normally now, and you know, we, we think we know a little bit. Normally that thing was supposed to shatter the minute that water hit. It took overnight for it to shatter. I was telling my husband, I said, God is so good. There is no word to describe it. I don't want you to just know, amen, uh, the, 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 the history of the Bible. We, we, we're, aren't you tired of talking and hearing about how God raised Lazarus from the dead? Mm -hmm. aren't, aren't, aren't you tired of the story of, I mean, I know you know the story of how the walls of Jericho came down. Mm -hmm. Amen, I know you hear my story of my miracles on, on multiple occasions. But don't it whet your appetite to want to know for yourself. Amen. <laughs> Don't you want to see it in your life? Amen. Am I the only one that gave a sacrifice in the anniversary that's looking for a reward and get one every day? Somebody ought to say, that's me too. Amen. I know that God touched this situation and changed the trajectory of my life. And so I expect you go to my mailbox to pick up my mail. I said, don't come back without me a check. Did you bring my check? I look for one every day. Amen. Amen. Y'all ain't y'all at this time no. with me and me? No. Am I the only one to get blessed? No. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Don't you want to know him like that too? Uh -huh. Then you give, then you love, don't you do aren't you here? Uh -huh. Amen. You got you got to want to know him who he is. You want you want that omnipresence. Uh -huh. You don't want to just know him in theory. Amen. Don't you want to know him for yourself? Yeah. Amen. 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 Tell your own story. Amen. Make your own story. I was talking to the sister this morning before the service, and she said, I want to write a book. God has done so much for me. Amen. She gave you just a little bit of her story. Amen. Amen. And she's got story after story after story of the goodness of God. Amen. So much so that she can write a book. Amen. It's time for you to tell your story. Amen. 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 God's been good to you. I, let me tell you something. God is so awesome. There's nothing outside of his reign where you're concerned. If you remember who he called you to be, Amen. I know I'm royal. Amen. I know I'm special. Amen. 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 And then before I got ready to take care of my clothes last night for the day, I looked in the closet and I told my husband, I said, come here quick. Lord. It was new stuff hanging up in the closet. Oh. This is, I kid you not, with the tags still on oh. that we didn't buy. That we didn't buy. Oh. I said, oh my God, picked up a few pounds. So God had put some new stuff up in there for me. Amen. 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 I'm talking about the, the, the right now God, Amen. the Amen. omnipresent God. Amen. That Amen. you got to want like Gideon for your eyes to be open so that you can see him for yourself. Amen. Get your own story, your own testimony. Amen. 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 Ooh. Amen. I thank
thank God for his presence on this morning. Yes. Go on and stand to your feet. Yes, yes. Amen. God is good.